Hey Code Crew, Firestore is not like your traditional database. It doesn't use tables and rows and it doesn't use SQL. In fact, this second generation Firebase product isn't even like its first generation counterpart, the Firebase real-time database. In this video, I'm gonna show you how your data is going to be structured and organized in a Firestore database and what sorts of data that you can store in it. All right, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Chris Ching and welcome to Code with Chris, where we teach normal people like you and I how to build apps and how to code. Now, if you're coming from lesson one of the Firestore tutorial series, you'll know that I'm going to show you how to use Firestore database in the context of an app. However, I've decided to move that into its own separate series and playlist so that this Firestore tutorial series will be purely focused on how to use Firestore. And in that series, I will show you how to build an app that leverages the Firestore database. If you want to follow along as these tutorials get released two to three times a week, then I highly urge you to hit that subscribe button below. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the thumbs up button. That is really going to help spread the word. All right, let's dive in. We're going to start with some diagrams so I can illustrate the concepts for you. And then we're going to go do a screencast and dive into the Firestore backend. And I'll put the concepts into practice so that you can see it with your own eyes. Now in the Firestore database, there are two main record types collections and documents. Your database is structured as a whole bunch of collections and each collection holds a bunch of documents. So essentially, your database could be described as multiple collections of documents. Now each collection has a unique name and each document also has a name. The documents within each collection must have unique names, but the documents in different collections can have the same name. Now collections and documents are just a way to organize your data. But where does your data actually live? The answer is inside your documents. Each document holds your actual data. The data in each document is represented in pairs of information. Each pair contains a field and a value. Think of the field as a label and the value would be the data that you want to store. So what sorts of data can you store? Well, here's a list. In the Firestore database documentation, it provides more details about each data type, and I'll leave the link to that below the video. In a minute, I'll demonstrate each data type for you in an actual Firestore database, but right now, I want to discuss the map data type a little further. No, this is not a geographical map. Instead, this data type allows you to nest more pairs of data. So to illustrate, this is your document. The first pair might have a field called nickname and the data type is text. The value might be bullseye. The second data pair might have a field called name and the data type is map. The value would actually be two nested data pairs representing the first name and the last name. This would be useful if you needed the two pieces of information separately. And this is just one example of how the map data type can be used. If you're thinking that you could have just had three fields with the data type text, you wouldn't be wrong. The map data type just gives you another option. And while we're on the topic of fields and values, just in case you're coming from a MySQL background or something like that, I just wanna make sure that you know you can have differing fields for documents in the same collection. I know it can be really tough to get out of a MySQL mindset where you have tables, columns, and rows. That was the case for me. Now having uniformity across your documents definitely helps when it comes time to query them, but I just want you to know that it's not a requirement. Now, before we dive into the screencast where I demo this stuff for real, I need to explain one more concept, subcollections. You see, each document can actually have its own collections of documents. And then those documents can have their own collections of documents. And we can go up to 100 levels deep. Now that you know how the data is structured and organized in a Firestore database, Let's go and demonstrate these concepts in an actual Firestore database. So here we're looking at the Firebase backend for the custom login Firebase authentication demo that I did last week. And if you didn't see that, I'll link to it above. But in addition to having a authentication store on this backend, you can also set up a database. And this is where we're going to be demoing some of the stuff that I just showed you. Now the database part, when you set this up for the first time, you can actually choose from real-time database and cloud Firestore. I'll do a separate video on differences and stuff like that, but right now I wanna focus on showing you some of the concepts that we just went through. So here is a brand new empty Firestore database. We talked about collections of documents. All right, so here we're gonna start a brand new collection and I'm gonna name it just something like A. 
for example, it says that, you know, you could call it users if each document is going to be information about a particular user. But I'm just not going to use real names here for the sake of this demonstration. But what I do want to point out to you is take a look at this path because when we, it comes time to actually access this data and work with it, this path is going to be really important. And this is just this forward slash is going to be known as your root. Okay, so that's going to be, you know, the starting point. So this collection here, the ID is going to be A and it's going to be basically at the root. As we get deeper and deeper, you'll see that this path is going to grow and it's basically constructed by these collection and document IDs. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and click next. Uh, we're gonna add a starting document in this collection. I'm just gonna call this, you know, document A, something like that. And we can also add a sample field. So let's do that. Let's say, you know, name, uh, what, what did we use? We used name, right? So let's do that. And string is basically text. So we're gonna start with that. Let's do bullseye and let's save this and take a look at what we've got. So this column on the left hand side lists all of our collections at the root node. Uh, we've, so far we've got one called A and then inside that collection we have one document called doc slash A. We can add a separate document. I'm just going to do doc slash B and uh, I'll add this. I'm going to purposely make it different. just so I can prove to you that, see, it doesn't matter. The actual fields and data inside of each document doesn't have to be uniform. Uh, and then on this last hand column, you're looking inside the document that we have selected in the middle column. So these are all of the data pairs in document A. And if I select document B, here would be all of the data pairs as well. Couple of things I wanna point out to you, the path to access this document right here would be, you can see that little house represents kind of the root node. It would be forward slash A, because that's the collection this document is in, right? Forward slash doc slash A, and that would give you the reference to that specific document. Now, before we dive into the documents and start looking at data types and stuff like that, there are a few more things I wanna demonstrate just based on what we talked about. So let's start a second collection called B. And I'm also going to start a new document. Um, let's do that. Uh, and I want to demonstrate to you that the collection names here in this root group of collections, these have to be unique. However, if you take a look at the documents in here, I have doc slash A and doc slash A. Both of these documents have the same ID, but that's not a problem because the actual reference to that document for this guy is forward slash a forward slash doc dash a. Whereas for this one, it would be forward slash B and then forward slash doc dash a. All right, now let's dive into a document and take a look at fields and data types. So ignoring this start collection part, which is for sub collections, as we mentioned, let's take a look at the different fields um, and add some sample ones. So uh, let's add, I'm just gonna call it a number and we'll choose number as the data type. So I'll add that. We've, we've also got here, uh, let's pick a different data type here, Boolean. Um, let's call this, I don't know, switch. Could be true or false. What else have we got? I want to do the easy ones first. Nulk just means nothing. Could be, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that means nothing. And uh, we've got timestamp, right? So you know, this interface lets you pretty handily add date and times. So that's date. Uh, we've got geo point. You know, this is some sort of Latin long. And uh, we've also got a reference. Now a reference, you can see here, is a path to another document. 
uh, and then you specify exactly how we just illustrated. It would be a path like you see up here, right? Slash B slash whatever that document ID may be. Uh, and you would specify that document path right here. And this value becomes a reference to another document. Now this can be useful for cross-referencing data. So here I'm gonna specify uh, collection A and uh, maybe doc slash A or something like that. Oops, I forgot here. Give that field a name. Okay, so there we go. Now, last but not least, we also have, well, actually we have an array and let's just call this a list. Now the interesting thing about arrays here, and it's kind of different from working with your standard Swift arrays is that, you know, the data types can be different for each, um, for each item in your array. So that's kind of cool, right? Now the last thing I want to show you are sub collections. So let's do right here in this document, start um, a sub collection. I'll just I'll call this my sub collection and I'm just gonna call this sub A and we can do something like that. So let's, this is the path right to that sub A document. You can see it's collection B and then document A in collection B, right? And then the sub collection name and then the document in that sub collection. So that's the total path to reach this document right here. But let's move back for a second. So we've got collection B, we've got doc-A, and then you can see here, uh, my sub collection. Now, we can have multiple collections in this same document. It's not just limited to one. So you could start another uh, sub collection in this document. If you go into my collection, um, then you can start multiple documents in here. Right, and then this document in this sub collection can have another sub collection and we can really go 100 levels deep with this. Now, how you end up structuring your data really depends on what your app does and how you need to query it and how you need to display that data. But I hope that this video plants the seeds for how Firestore organizes that data. Now in later videos of this Firestore tutorial series, we're going to get into things like querying your data. And at that point, it might be more clear about how you should organize your documents and collections. But for now, I hope that this was a really good primer to help you understand how Firestore works. Now in this video, you learn that your data is gonna be stored as collections of documents in the Firestore database. Now in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to work with that data in your iOS app. So don't miss the next video by hitting the subscribe button below and make sure to check out our Firebase authentication series as well if you're interested in creating login pages and having user accounts for your app. All right, I'll see you guys next time.